Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders, an initiative by World Development Corporation. I am Falakseed Khan, anchor at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry titans to share their experiences, thoughts, ideas, and best practices in order to inspire one another and future leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings acquired by these industry leaders. We also hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Leaders interviews, we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone by identifying, nurturing, and using the trade secrets that are proven success formulas for men. And this is what we aim for with these sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such industry giant on FaceTime with leaders with us today, Mr. Neeraj Boyer. Hello, welcome, Mr. Boyer. We are glad to have you here today with us on FaceTime with leaders. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Mr. Boyer is a seasoned professional with two and a half decades of diverse experience in the mobile telecom and IT solutions industry. He has held various roles throughout his career, including IT solutions sales and pre-sales, software development, project deliveries, project and program management, professional services, business development, product management, and bid management. He has worked in different geographies and has a strong track record of delivering successful projects and driving business growth. Recently, he has served as the Vice President of Program Management at Airlink, overseeing the management of global programs across industry verticals and facilitating the connection of millions of cars to enhance safety, comfort, and cost effectiveness at the prominent global company specializing in IoT and connectivity solutions for industries such as automotive, telecommunications, and enterprise. So, Mr. Boyer, could you let our viewers know in brief about your career journey so far? Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's uh, really a pleasure and honor to uh, be on this platform Thank and talk so to all of you guys. Um, so, uh, my journey, uh, uh, if I can say in a nutshell, it's it all started when, uh, fresh out of the college, I was um, doing sales, uh, a solution sales with... Uh, selling IT connectivity solutions and, uh, uh, you know, wide area networking solutions. So um, th this is, this we are talking about uh, uh, mid nineties. Uh, and um, uh, there was, that was the time when there was all this boom, the software development, you know, you've you got to be in the software development field. So uh, that's when I um, kind of uh, got into um, figuring out how, how we can do that. And, uh, um, I got myself some certifications from Microsoft. That's the leading, um, you know, uh, the software development platform at that time. And um, I got myself into, landed a job into a software development firm in uh, running from uh, an export zone in Mumbai. So that's that's the start. Uh, of, that was my first pivot from what I was doing uh, from IT solutions sales, corporate sales to uh, uh, to development. And uh, just when, when I was uh, engaged in this job, uh, a friend and colleague told me that, you know, uh, there's this Silicon Valley startup and uh, they're going to set up operations in, uh, in India. Uh, I said, okay, <laughs> so what's the startup and what, what, is, what are they into? So they were going to do something in telecom space and, you know, they are looking uh, to do a setup here. Uh, and, and that was the time when, you know, we, the, I was already into uh, software exports and working for a good uh, company there. I was all set to go to the US <laughs> with two job offers in hand. So I had uh, these choices to make. So this, uh, the, the offer with the US company and uh, a startup, uh, which is starting in uh, operations in India. And I chose the latter. I, I joined, I jumped on the startup bandwagon and, um, uh, this was in uh, year 2000. Um, telecom was obviously a, a growth industry at that point, and um, I, I kind of took an uh, uh, you know, educated uh, guess an opportunity where I said, 
okay, let's 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 see what uh, what they are up to. And ever since then, so uh, the start of their joint, um, it's uh, when I joined, I was a employee number nine, and uh, that company grew on to become a two thousand employee company, a billion dollar valuation. I served with them. I worked with them for thirteen years, and um, uh, joined as a developer. Um, and um, this was the year two thousand. Then went on um, to uh, got engaged with the project deliveries. So uh, while I was in here, there was um, you know it's a startup. So we built a solution. Now uh, we in a year and a half down the line. We landed a customer, so okay. And now uh, we landed a customer. Now we've got to send somebody in the, on on site. And um, I, with my little bit of sales sales background that I had, I and my my customer interactions, I was the chosen fortunate one. We said, okay, let's let's go, let's uh, let's send him. So uh, that was my first project for the company for everyone overseas, um, dealing with an international customer. Um, this was in Hong Kong and. Uh, uh, we deliver, I, I delivered the very first project for the company. Since then, the floodgates opened. I was all across the globe um, doing project implementations. So from software development to project implementations, and uh, it, it went on and on. I was practically living in the suitcase for about three, four years. And uh, it took me all across the world, um, uh, banging face of the customer and uh, doing the implementations. and. Um, with that progression, I um, I ended up uh, <clears throat> managing a region uh, and uh, running projects for them. Eventually, managing the revenues uh, for the region. This is how I grew the company, and uh, I I transitioned um, from being a developer to what uh, the last position I held in that company was uh, head of business business unit. Uh, where I was responsible for the entire uh, product line uh, and all the cross functional teams reporting into me um, and running the business there. Uh, 13 years into that, and there's, while this company, this, uh, the, in, in, in the journey, uh, there was another opportunity which showed up with the company. We, uh, so we, we were always into this mergers and acquisitions and trying to build um, a value for the company. Uh, one such acquisition which was done and we, uh, you know, we, we got some assets in Sweden and we said that you know, we, uh, we got to do the, um, you know, there's this uh, mobile network, uh, mobile operator, mobile networks, that um, that's an opportunity area that we, that we have and the company felt that, uh, you know, this is a good enough business line um, to in fact um, uh, have a, a separate company of its own. So there was a spin off from that. And I jumped into yet another startup. And uh, there again, I was employee number one. I was, I was the first one to join. I started there. And uh, that company then, um, then went on through its uh, cycles of uh, pivots and stuff like that. Eventually, um, um, I, my progression there was uh, when, we, when we stabilized on the product line, I, I, held, I started running all the programs with all the marquee customers uh, that we were serving in the automotive space, um, in the mobile operators. And uh, uh, the, these are some, some global giants uh, in automotive space, uh, the Americans and the German ones, uh, to which we were um, uh, Selling solutions, and we, uh, I, I was, I happened to be a program manager for, uh, for all of that. Uh, so that's how my journey had been so far, and um, uh, I'm, I'm still rolling. Uh, let's see what my next steps are. That's really very interesting to know. So you have handled several roles and responsibilities. What takes someone to be so cross skilled? Ah, <laughs> I think. Um, well, um, you see, uh, my last 23 years had been um, into a startup environment and um, uh, the startup environment and um, and the mentors and the relationship that I had, uh, that was partly to do something with it. Um, but yeah, what does it take, <laughs> right, to, to, to have this cross-function, functional skills? Um, 
You see, uh, I mean, the, the first thing uh, is uh, I, I never allowed myself to be boxed. Okay, so, you know, because once you box yourself, all the other opportunities that are there outside are, you know, you're essentially denying them. Okay, so, uh, so that, that was my, my fundamental thing. I, I never box myself um, into any role, any, um, any field or any, anything of that, that sort. But then how do you do that, uh, right? Uh, it, it, I, I kept it very simple, some very few core, uh, uh, you know, philosophies or technologies that, that I, I kind of uh, uh, imbibed in me. It, it's, you know, uh, you, you basically have to build a value. And, you know, I can, uh, in fact, um, give you some references to my, to my journey so that uh, uh, this discussion doesn't become a philosophical discussion. <laughs> but, uh, um, one thing is, uh, it's, it's, it's really, really simple things which I practice. Uh, have a value, you know, you yourself as a value. So it's a skill that you have, oh great, that will be a value. But then uh, you need to uh, work on that skill to, to, to the extent that uh, it is demonstrable. You can demonstrate results to that. And when uh, and then, you, you should be able to leverage those skills for your next jump. Now, this is this simple and it, and it goes on, you, it applies to anything. My, my first transition, like I said uh, in, in my introduction that from sales to software development, how, how I did that. That was a time when Microsoft was big time promoting this advanced technologies of, uh, this was an era of, uh, pre.net and uh, these certifications, uh, you know, they, they were promoting it big time. So I, I got myself doing that. Um, that basically is a value or a skill that I acquired. And then I used it so that the opportunities were made available for me uh, to work in a software development domain. So uh, that's one cross reference that I can, um, I can give you that I, you, you create a value and then you use that to make the opportunities available for you. So we, we, we hear all this, you know, you, uh, opportunities you need to go after and create opportunities for yourself. Uh, I, I, I always take a step back from that. It's, uh, uh, I first question myself that, are you available for that opportunity? So, uh, so I made myself available and, um, and and the um, and then the opportunity came and I, I leveraged that. So uh, I kept it simple. But but you know in in all this journey, I think the key thing uh, that uh, that really made me work cross functional was uh, I was in, in any role that I took. So even for project implementations or you know heading a business line or whatever pre sales, I was always close to the customer. I was always customer facing. I was always working with the customers, and um, this this is the outward focus. And inwardly, I had always um, you know worked with the teams um, internally, all across board, complete cross functional. So I was kind of a, always in a in a conduit between the external world and the internal to the company. And I think my exposure to that area, particular area area got me this cross skills uh, uh, that, that you know, said about me. So uh, I, I think it's really important, any company, anything that you do, um, it's, it's important that it should be customer centric, customer focus, and how you translate that into your internal things, um, how you work with your uh, internal teams, what kind of relationship do you nurture across functions, across board in the backend teams, is something that is, that has been a key uh, for my uh, cross functional roles. Uh, yes, truly, indeed. So, have you ever felt that you have had to step out of your area of excellence or focus? Always, all the time. And um, in fact, you know that's that's one of the things. Uh, uh, like I said, if you are in a in, in a startup environment, and um, you are you're, you're continuously uh, try to evolve what you do 
um, um, whether it is um, you know product development or or anything that you do, you are developing a software, you are developing uh, uh, launching a services for customers. So every in every aspect of that, you you always are pushed or exposed to circumstances where uh, you you just cannot say no. Okay, you you need to go get out of your comfort zone and do those things. Um, Again, I mean, quoting uh, something from uh, from my journey. The the first the, the first startup which I joined, with, where I eventually progressed in thirteen years into a nice, comfortable uh, head of business in that kind of a job. When the other opportunity which showed up, uh, I mean, it, it was going to be a, a like pressing a reset button uh, to your career. But I uh, I think I I. I thought about it. I liked the product ideas. I liked what was going to happen uh, uh, with with uh, with the assets that we had, and uh, I jumped onto it. So I think the uh, you always being pushed out of the comfort zone. Like I said, this also um, you know, kind of fits into don't want to get boxed into something else. So never hesitant. Um, uh, I got, just took that leap. Leap of faith started another, working for another startup. <laughs> That's wonderful. So when we talk about corporate governance, how and when did you develop an interest in corporate governance? Uh, I think uh, yes. Um, the you see the the technology landscape is drastically changing. There are uh, the startup environment in India, particularly um, in past five, seven years has, has been very, very dynamic. Um, I, I think that was the trigger. Plus, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the the startup uh, landscape, uh, like, the, and you know, with, with this changing, there are companies which are coming up in unknown spaces. The technology evolution is so rapid that you now have corporations running in, in, in kind of a unfamiliar faces. I am not saying unknown, unfamiliar spaces. So, uh, so I, I always had an eye on that. And, uh, and of course, uh, the um, governance was, uh, was at a very core for me as a program management uh, head and as a program manager myself. So uh, I, I think that, that triggered my interest and uh, that, that's how I got into uh, corporate governance uh, and understanding them. In the, and there is, this is just a beginning. I think there is a long journey ahead for me in this area. So as a corporate governance expert, what values do you bring to the table? Uh, <clears throat> uh, see, I, like, like I said, I had been um, in, in, at least in the recent experience and all through the journey. I've been a governance guy. Governance in the sense that my uh, my exposure with the customers and translating those internally, there was there is um, how uh, how of things that that needs to be done. So my exposure was always there. Um, I I know how cross functions. You know, I have nurtured. I have nurtured a, a trait where. I could work with cross-functional teams and understand what they do, uh, and 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 thereby uh, protect or, or or kind of uh, uh, safeguard the projects and the deliveries that we do outwardly to the customers, and and and, and that role has actually given me a, a whole lot of insights on uh, you know how to get things done. Um, that and um, and of course now um, that I'm a certified independent director. <laughs> Uh, uh, which is my first step towards uh, starting this journey, and there's a lot yes. of things to go uh, go along. Um, uh, there is there is there are many things um, on the ESG side, uh, data security. There is a lot of a lot of play there, and um, I'm, I'm just um, all excited right now uh, to start that journey. That's really great, and we wish you the best for that. <laughs> Thank you. So as someone working closely with technology, what are some of the most remarkable changes you have seen in your field with changes in technology? And what changes do you expect to see with the advent of IoT, AI, ML, blockchain, big data, and Web 3.0? Uh, 
Okay. So, look, um, you know, any, you, you look at any technological innovation, okay, and historically, this has been the case. Any, uh, any technology, technology innovation, uh, when it finds a use case, uh, uh, which is um, kind of solving a problem or addressing a critical mass, will eventually become a regulation. And now and I'll explain to you what I mean by that. Uh, is um, the, the, the data science, for example. Right? So data scientists, had they, they had been there around um, for third, three decades that they've been around. Uh, but data science as, as a stream of field, a specialization or a, uh, or a technology uh, platform uh, has only started to uh, evolve just now. Okay. So there was always data. There were a lot of applications. There was uh, um, the new nuclear plants were gen generating tons of data. Your uh, industry powerhouses were generating tons of data. And somebody was sitting down and analyzing that. There was al already a space there. Uh, but what happened then? This this data generation, the velocity at which the data generation has has increased over the past couple of decades, is phenomenal. The the connectivity infrastructure has streamlined. Your um, you you have IoT. Everything is connected now. My my umbrella, washing machine, shoes, everything is connected. And these are the these are the things which are generating a whole lot of data. So now your data generation and analysis and somebody working on that, which was earlier restricted to a particular domain, has now stepped into your household. So there's huge data, a lot of things. And, and, and that actually pushed the uh, evolution of data science, AI, ML, all, all of these things, right? Um, so there was AI, ML, uh, your, um, uh, the the airplane flight guiding uh, uh, software they, they, these are all AI ML based they used to be right they, they they all were there but now they have stepped into your household it has become common data is generated by everything even your pet generates a data and it needs to be analyzed and that's that force the evolution of these te technologies and uh, I think uh, that. Uh, since it has become, uh, uh, like I said, uh, that some if if uh, if a technology innovation finds its use case, it to a, to a to a critical enough mass or even a common uh, uh, common people, it is soon to become a regulation. Look at blockchain. Blockchain started as a, you know cryptocurrency backbone and all, all of these things. It, uh, today it has been adopted. Uh, your Web 3.0 uh, has the building block of Web 3.0 is that you RBI rolled out a, a digital rupee based on that technology. So once you have a, a, a critical use case, this will become a regulation. And today, if the companies are not embracing uh, these acronyms, I think uh, for them to stay relevant, uh, these acronyms should be very, very central uh, part of uh, their product strategies. That's there, truly. <laughs> yes. So as you know, we are building a community of industry magnets. The move is meant for cross-pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge-sharing community of corporate giants and industry experts. What are your thoughts about these initiatives taken by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Hebal Mehta, and the whole World Development Corporation team? Well, first of all, kudos to Hebel, Zishan, and the entire WDC team. Uh, I, I think you have uh, hit the nail on the head. Uh, there is, uh, it, it's a wonderful platform. Um, it, it, it's a wonderful platform in terms of, uh, see, we, we've seen this, and you, you, you might have probably heard this um, uh, being said by all the other, other industry leaders and giants, that uh, today, the boards need to go a level deep. Right, uh, with all these uh, um, technologies coming in, you know, you, you have a variety uh, of uh, technological adoptions being uh, um, being done by the corporations, and you know, there is there is a whole lot of play happening there. And the, with these dynamics, the board will definitely there is a need for board to go a little bit deep and work even a little more closely. 
And I think um, by, by gathering this cross-pollination, so to say, uh, you, you are in fact empowering uh, the, um, the, the technology uh, people to also understand how the board functions of, and, and this is a very fantastic bridge and uh, in fact, I'm personally excited uh, that uh, once I'm, since I've started this journey now, I'm, I'm more eager to look forward and uh, get on the board and, 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 and uh, make some meaningful contribution from, uh, from what the experience I've gathered. Really kind words. It was fantastic conversing with you and I'm confident that your insights will inspire future leaders. Thank you, Mr. Neeraj, for joining us today. We wish you the best for your future endeavors. Moreover, trust that this initiative by Directors Institute unquestionably expanded the participants' understanding and enriched their minds. Thank you so much once again for joining us today on FaceTime with Leaders and sharing all your wonderful insights, your journey and your uh, principles so far. So I'm sure that, you know, everyone watching this, it is going to help them grow in their careers too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure being here talking to you. Thank you so much.